I don't care that it's winter. I'm cutting my hair myself. Hey, it's Target Shooter 145, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be doing the part two to how my Crossman 760 has been holding up. I've had this thing for two years, and if you want to watch part one, I'll put a link right up here so you can click on that and watch it. And if you're watching on a mobile device, go ahead and click the link in the description. And uh, if you want to just watch this video, then that's fine too. But uh, in that video, I did uh, an ac the accuracy and the power, if it still sustained it. And the short answer is, yes, it did. It did, it did keep its accuracy and its power. But uh, in this video, why I'm making a part two, is any cosmetic things that happen to it. Or, you know, internal, the mechanical things to it. Anything that's messed up over the past couple of years. And to be honest, this, this is not normal, what I've put this thing through. Because I respect Crossman, and I love that all of their guns have re some reliability to them. Not all of them have the greatest accuracy because they're usually just meant for target shooting, like this one. Uh, this one's just rated for uh, planking, but they ha do have the reliability there. And this is not normal like everyday shooting. I have put this thing through some rigorous stuff, like uh, I did a tor torture test on this thing about a year ago, and I did this. This and this. It's more like what you would do on a real gun. So none of it has been really regularly. And I'm just going to show you if, you know, I mean, there is some things to it that make it, you know, you could tell if it was brand new if I tried to sell it to somebody. But I love this thing. I couldn't sell it to anybody. Um, for the most part, it's pretty nice. I mean, the only thing that I've found wrong with it is that uh, sometimes you'll be shooting and through a certain cycle, I haven't really paid attention to it enough to really figure out the uh, uh, the pattern it does this in. But you'll have to, uh, sometimes I can't put it back on uh, safe, like I can't, uh, the cross bolt. Here, there it is, it won't do it. And then you have to pull it back to the first click on the bolt and then push it back. That's a minor issue. I mean, it's not that big of a deal with. I'm not sure when it started doing that. It just started doing that. And as you can tell by one of the clips from the torture test, um, there's a reason why some things rattle in it. I mean, it's nothing important, but it, it's something to do with the trigger, I believe. <laughs> you can hear it. It's, it's like a little metal piece. I don't know what came loose. And I'm too afraid to take this thing apart to mess it up so I think I'll just keep it where it is now and um, let's see what else nothing else really I, I mean there's no real noticeable dings on it I mean there's some scratches on the stock I'm not sure how well this will show up on camera some scratches on the stock and you're probably wondering where that came from it actually didn't occur during the torture test when I threw it about 50 feet what actually happened was uh here I'll show you a clip Alright then. Okay, back to the topic here. Ignoring that. Ignoring it. I'll show you a clip right here of what I did to this, and you've probably seen me shoot some glass bottles out here before, and I'll show you this clip right here. And what I did in that clip, if you couldn't tell, was I still had some glass bottles hanging up on the my stand. They weren't really hanging, they were just kind of sitting there, but they didn't fall off. What else? I was out of pellets. You use a stock when you're out of pellets. And this thing is made out of a synthetic plastic. They use them a lot on a lot of guns nowadays. They're not wood, it's not metal. It's got metal internals. But, uh, yeah, that's basically it. This thing is dirtied up a bit. I haven't really cleaned it in a while. So, oh, there's one more thing. The, the, uh, this stupid safe one. It won't go back on safe sometimes. Uh, the cross bolt. The, uh, not the crow, cross bolt. The bolt on this thing. The, when you pull it back, it's not really that smooth anymore. I'm guessing from when I, uh, put mud in this thing at the end of that torture test video and it, 
dirt just kind of dried up in there. Like I said, I, I'm afraid to take this thing apart and mess it up. So, about half of the time, that's it will not go back on safe. You have to pull the boat back and push it back. I don't know how that. I I really I, I'm guessing something's jammed in there. Probably has to do with the that in some way. Oh man, that. Oh, well, now it's not one to do it. But there it is. I'm guessing that's a loose pin up here where it hinges. That's all I got from that. Just It's just gotten loose. And you got to think, I put it through a torture test, hit a few things with it. The stock, specifically the stock. And that's about it. This thing has been really reliable for the past two years. And if I still have this thing in five years, not five years from now, from when I got it, so in three years, then I'll do another one to see how it's holding up then. Knowing me, i probably break it by then. But uh, in my last video, the part one to how this thing has been holding up, at the end of the video, I did a group test. And I have some uh, lubricant for this thing that you put all up in the mechanics of where you get your power from. It's a multi-pump. And I kind of put the lubricant on after it, which was a dumb idea. So in this video, I'm going to go ahead and put it on it and then take another group shot. So let's go ahead and get to that. All right, so we're going to be taking a five-shot group with the Crossman 760, just like in the part one of this series right here, which this is the last part to it. But uh, we're, this time, we're going to be adding the rim oil to the gun. to get it on the joint to the rifle and then pump it up 10 times and then I'll dry fire it and then we should be good to go got the uh, crossman sharp tip pellets in here and there's no reason to really be using sharp tips I just I just feel like using them so Go ahead and get started. And as you can tell by the second camera's view, I really didn't have much to prepare for this. I just kind of threw together what I had. So I just kind of drew a target on a uh, piece of paper, old scrap board, propped it up. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get uh, this five shot group done. I think I forgot to mention it, but we're at, we're at uh, 21 feet. It's the uh, recommended range for uh, grouping a uh, pistol, a firearm pistol. And I decided to bring it a bit closer than my last video because uh, just to make sure that all of them get in that and you get an idea of it. And I'm not sure if you could tell, but uh, I didn't know how hard that board was. Like I said, it was scrap. And those pellets were flying back on me. One of them hit me on the hand. Didn't, you know hurt me really that bad well it did when it hit me and after the third shot I went and grabbed my safety glasses because I forgot to get them I always wear safety glasses because I always have ricochets you will always have ricochets thought this thing would be good enough to get stuck in them apparently not so I'm gonna go I think it's about a three inch group I really didn't measure I just eyeballed it but uh, basically I think this thing holds up pretty good after two years after two years I'm not sure about five we'll see that later but I want to thank you guys for watching always wear safety glasses because uh, one of those kind of hit me up in the shoulder that's too close to my face for comfort one of them the second shot is when it first ricocheted hit me in the leg second one hit me up here and the next one I can't remember when the third one hit me I was like okay that's too close that is way too close went in got my safety glasses came back out shot the last two shots you can probably tell that I moved or something uh, through the clip, but uh, I'm rambling here. But uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you on my next video, and uh, I'd like if you go and get ahead and give this video a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it a lot. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and make sure to share the video if you have anyone that uh, may be interested in seeing how well this is uh, holding up. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.